Hi everyone, Apollo PS2 here, back with another video. I first want to thank everyone for helping me reach past 200 subscribers. The support has been overwhelming and amazing. Today, we are going through my top 10 ways to get certs in Planetside 2 as a beginning player. Most of the clips you'll see today are from our charity live stream on twitch.com slash Apollo PS2 that we held three weeks ago where we raised over $800 to help fund COVID-19 vaccinations in low-income countries. With the new player experience update being rolled out, I figured this would be a topic lots of folks would be searching for, and I felt that I had some credibility to be able to talk about getting certs, since I have amassed over 1.6 million of those scrumptious little orange fellas over the years. The goal of this video is to show you how to get certs fast upon starting your journey here on Araxis. Rather than ranking these 10 methods in order from worst to best, I will rather rank them from most niche to most accessible since I believe all are viable. That way you can judge their effectiveness for yourself, which ones match your individual playstyle the most, and know what to start with right away. In my mind, there are three components to determining what I will refer to as the profitability of an activity in the vast sandbox that is Plantside 2. The first component is obviously reward. How much XP am I getting for each action? The second is difficulty. How much skill is required to earn this XP? What equipment, if any, do I need to get this type of experience? And the third is opportunity. How often can I earn this type of XP? How much effort will it take? Is this XP event in my control or does it rely on other players or a specific environment? This is helpful since these are the criteria that XP events are balanced upon in Plantside 2. Once you think about what you are doing and apply it to this framework, it'll be easy to see if what you are doing is worth it when your goal is to acquire certs. At number 10, we have the Triage Scout Radar Flash. This is a bit of a cheesy one for when you are feeling lazy but it is still highly effective, make no mistake. It involves getting a flash with scout radar equipped while your medic has its triage passive ability and shield bubble equipped. You park yourself and shield bubble nearby choke points where you are safe but your friends are not and reap the rewards. This works great at bases like TI Alloys or anywhere with the building that contains two sets of powerhouse stairs. Think Xenotech, Scarfield, Mao Watchtower, and Rashu Tower point buildings. The key here is to pick somewhere safe to park, and you will passively heal all infantry, even maxes, and repair shields. The ribbons will come flooding in when lots of players are nearby, both from healing and scout radar assists. Bonus points if you are in a squad and have logistics specialists attached to your loadout, as this can then serve as a very useful pocket router spawn point. Number 9 is leading squads and platoons. While everyone can lead, I put this as a more niche activity because not many folks can lead effectively in Planet Side 2. I do not recommend leading for the sake of getting certs or finishing the leadership directive because it is a fast, fast track way to having a lot of people dislike you if you are negatively impacting their playtime, even with the best intentions at heart. With that being said, if you can lead, it can be quite profitable. There are many different ribbons that one can earn passively when leading that are tied to your squad members earning XP in general and capturing bases. This isn't even including the excellent XP bonus you receive when supporting squad mates through repairs, revives, and the like. In addition, keep in mind that when you lead, you are also the one who gets to direct the action towards more profitable, active fights. Now, if you are more of a loner player, number eight has you covered, and that is playing as an SMG infiltrator. Let's face it, infiltrators can be pretty busted, and playing with a good SMG in your hands that can shred people will ensure rage tells and search for days no matter your aim. This helps if you are a killing machine in general, of course, and is only compounded if you are good at using your cloak and positioning to pace out engagements. Always place a motion spotter in hard to shoot yet congested areas for extra certs. That way you share in everyone's success. Number seven is a personal favorite of mine and ties in with leading somewhat, the clown bus. This is surprisingly accessible as all you will need is either a blockade Sunday or two repair Sunderers pulled that you and your friends can hop into. 
the gunners and you, the driver, are all engineers, while everyone else hops in the back as a heavy assault with a rocket launcher, and preferably C4. The preferred launchers are a mix of default dumb fire air-to-ground launchers or decimators. Faction-specific launchers or light assaults with rocket rifles aren't a terrible idea either. The default basilisks are actually preferred here, though you may want to invest in some ammo upgrades since you will be spitting bullets constantly. The only thing I really recommend besides the utility slot is racer chassis. You're going to want to chase down others who notice how many threats you are packing inside. The idea is to drive around killing anything and everything. Most folks who see a Sunday traveling along Araxis see them as cert pinatas, not death balls of 10 rockets being fired in a volley at them. Be sure to call out targets and let your gunners know when it's time to stop shooting, hop out, and rep the damn thunderer. The heavies have got it taken care of, believe me. Six is being able to choose the correct fights. This ties in with maximizing the opportunity for cert gain. We want fights with a large amount of enemies, where not too many of them are focused on you. We also want fights to last a bit longer than normal as well. What's great about Planetside 2 is that this sort of fight not only exists, but there are extra incentives for you to take part in it too. A triple or even quadruple point base with a slight attacker overpop is where we want to go defend. And for doing so, we get a small bonus experience boost while we are at it. You will have more opportunities to engage and have a good understanding of where your enemies are coming from at these bases. Additionally, if one avenue is too congested, you can choose from different points to contest, giving you options. Bonus points if it's a tower base where you can jump right into the fight and get to head clicking. Halfway down our list, but perhaps most important for newer players, is simply not dying, which can be very helpful with number 6 in particular. It sounds simple, but it means oh so much, and all new players, no matter the initial skill level, struggle with it at the start for a bit. The saying, the best ability is availability, applies here. You cannot make certs effectively from the map screen, at least not the big bucks. With a game like Planetside 2 that has such a massive, massive scale and longer time to kill, aiming is actually second to positioning and situational awareness. You need to get in the habit first of knowing how you died. Get used to studying the death cam screen each time you die until you are confident explaining to someone what just happened. Once you get that down, walk it back a bit and try to understand each engagement you are entering into. If you watch me on Twitch, you will notice that my style of play is not very conducive to survival, typically. I'm a very aggressive player who bets on myself to clear out a point. Sometimes that goes my way, other times not so much. The distinction is that I am still consciously taking those risks and not running in blindly. Understand the base layouts and how your enemy might make decisions. Look at the mini-map almost as often as you look at what's in front of you. You will, in a split second, learn to see where multiple enemies are stationed or pushing from. Pay attention to sound, and you will immediately understand what sort of threat is on its way to you and will have time to plan accordingly for whether or not to give them the space that you currently occupy or plan to defend. If you master those techniques, you will be well on your way to being above 2KD, no matter the class or the aim. Now, aiming is still important though. So learning about Bloom and Cone of Fire and how to properly burst fire in Planet Side 2 is extremely helpful when actually faced with a 1v1 and will help enable you to face 2v1s and 3v1s in the future. This is a rather larger topic, so let me know if you'd like a more in-depth video in the comments below. Number 4 is linked with choosing the correct fights, and it's knowing when to leave the incorrect ones. This involves redeploying using the U key and looking back at the map for greener pastures. One of the largest and most consistent forms of XP in the game comes from killing things. If you learn to realize when the killing slows down, you will be able to quickly transport to good fights that are developing and keep your uptime high. At Bronze is something we all can do with a teammate, and that is being a pocket NG. Maxes are very good at taking damage especially at those juicy defensive fights, and you are very good at repairing them. There are three big recommendations for being a pocket NG though. First, don't forget that you have a gun. Repair XP is great and all, but swapping to a gun and having a giant meat shield in front of you 
makes you a secondary target to most folks and a bigger threat than you may realize. Be wary of smarter players though, as they will try and focus you if they can. When things get hot, be sure to start repairing your max buddy, but then back up around a corner. Your repair beam can travel through walls for about 5 meters as long as you hold down the button. This goes for medics as well. The third consideration is to use your utilities when available. A Spitfire covering your behind, hard light barriers to create choke points while defending, ammo packs being thrown in congested areas, and a crossbow with detect bolts all go a long way in keeping those XP ticks rolling on in. Unsurprisingly, number two features everyone's favorite source of XP, revives. Revives are quite simple. Each one gives 75 base experience. Each kill gives 100 base experience. You can see where dead allies are in your vicinity on your HUD. You can't always see your enemies when trying to kill them. You can just walk up and hold a button to get a revive. Killing can sometimes take skill. It's a no-brainer, folks. If you want certs, one of the best ways is to get revives. You're going to be looking for a real meat grinder on a capture point for this, where you may need to revive someone a few times if they want to get back to safety. You also have your passive nano regen heal ability and juicy revive grenades to keep the certs rolling in. It doesn't hurt that assault rifles make some of the best CQC 1v1 weapons in the game either, so you can put the combat into combat medic while you're at it. Last, but certainly not least, is a rather boring option, but a necessary one, and that is to play the objective. Plantside 2 wants you to play the objective, and they incentivize that with certs the same way that running in a squad is incentivized. Simply sitting on a capture point gives you the amount of XP equivalent to a few actual kills. If it is a tug of war type of battle or a three point base, all the merrier. In addition, capture points are where you are going to find the most allies to help support. That's where you want to throw down your ammo pack or use your heal tool, etc. Generators give tons of XP and enemies will be coming to try and re-secure them constantly. This is all before even talking about how much XP actually capping a base gives you or the frequent defense ribbons that you can receive. As of scripting out this video, missions have been revamped to give an absolute boatload of certs. I'm willing to bet a large amount of my own certs that the numbers will eventually be tweaked down, hence why I didn't put doing missions as one of my top 10 activities to get certs. However, these are currently a great way to get into the game and have an objective each play session that pays out big time. Bonus points being that you will be exposed to a lot of different weapons and playstyles by completing missions, and they tend to funnel you towards profitable cert gaining activities. Again, there are other very, very profitable ways to play in Plantside 2, but they either require specific and oftentimes costly equipment or a high level of skill in a niche playstyle. These are best explored on your own once you know the basics of Plant Side 2 and what is fun to you. It is really important that you find not just one, but multiple things that you find fun to do in Plant Side 2, as the game is constantly being balanced. I can attest to many of my friends over the last 9 years leaving the game when their thing was slightly or overly nerfed. By trying out a bunch of stuff and liking a good amount of activities, you ensure that when a nerf does inevitably come around, it'll typically make something else that you enjoy more powerful. That way, changes are never such a big deal. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and be sure to share your comments down below. Criticisms are always welcome. I'll be away on vacation over the next week, but we'll be making another montage for the month of September when I get back, so stay tuned. Until next time, happy farming.